everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson. Now guys, it is hotter than heck outside. <laughs> it's super hot, but I need to go do something about my pepper plants. So that is what we're going to do today. All right, guys, I'm trying to soak in the AC before I go outside. I always say every year that I'm not going to complain about the weather because as a desert gardener, we get to grow all year long. But every year I say at least I'm hot at least 20 to 40 times. <laughs> and we haven't even gotten to where we're triple digits at night yet. At night is only in the 80s. So... I still got I still got a little bit of time to go but I will say it I'm hot but I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna do something about my pepper plants as you guys know my pepper plants have been producing a lot of peppers and I've been toying with putting a different type of pepper there and pulling those ones my bell pepper and my banana pepper I am leaving my jalapeno pepper my jalapeno pepper is starting to finally go dormant and I am going to let it I'm probably gonna cut it back just a little bit just to kind of give it that time to itself to, you know, brace itself for all the hot heat. But it has finally stopped producing peppers, which I'm excited about because that means that I'll keep my, my jalapeno pepper plant for yet another year. So more salsa for us. All right guys, so let's brave it. Let's go out in the hot heat and see what we can get. Okay guys, so I'm watering. So you probably hear that down below. But from afar, these might look like really good, healthy plants. I mean, they're huge, they're bushy, they're doing really well. But when you get close up, you start seeing the problems. We have blossom and rot, which we'll talk about. We also have a lot of sun school, which we'll talk about too as well. And we are starting to get, I just saw a spider mite web. We're starting to get spider mites there goes the web right there so since we have some things going on with these plants and since I wanted to plant something different here anyway I'm going to take off all the fruit that I can make sure I get that in the freezer and as you can see it's already putting on new fruit which I'm not gonna wait for and then I'm just gonna allow this spot to get healthy again as you can see the soil is a lot lower and I'm going to give the sun to this Armenian cucumber so that can grow up a lot faster. Alright guys, and now you can see that brings a lot more sunlight to this bed. Now the Armenian cucumber is already starting to sprawl out and climb, but we want to make sure that it gets enough sun and gets enough space to really start to do that. And then now in this area, I am going to start to add more compost add just more amendments to it and get this nice and healthy for the sweet Marconi peppers that are going to go underneath it. So what I basically did is I cut out the understory so that then the actual like canopy can start growing which are the Armenian cucumbers and these tomatoes even though they're not going to like the direct direct sun so I will have this to kind of help shade that and the swiss chard too as well somebody asked me if my my swiss chard gets bitter during the summer and later in the summer it will but for right now it has all of these things kind of protecting it now one thing i will have to do is snip these all the way down to like the ground level and then really try and cover them up because these plants are not dead they're just cut back <laughs> so if i leave them they will continue to grow which is what i don't want i don't need any more bell peppers or, or banana peppers so we need to go ahead and get these out but these were too big for my snips so I am going to need to get a saw to get the rest of them out and this is the harvest so we're gonna talk about the sun skull which we can still use and we're also gonna talk about the blossom and rot which we can still use the rest of the pepper but this is what we got it is like a blazing 111 degrees currently we still have another two degrees to go before we hit the max for today, which is 113. So I am back inside so I don't melt. Now, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what happened with the peppers and the two different peppers that I had. So 
If you guys have been following my channel for a while, you will know that I never grow peppers, well, I never let my peppers fruit this late into the summer. By the time it starts, I start seeing sun skull. That usually is when I let the peppers either succumb to the caterpillars, which I haven't had in my garden for a number of seasons because of the spiders, or I just completely cut the pepper plant all the way back. So pretty much where I cut it down, where I left it before I have to take the hacksaw to it, that is normally where I cut my peppers down to and I allow them to reshape themselves. One of the reasons why I do that is because you get sun skull at this time of year. <laughs> you also get a pepper that, if it is a pepper that could be like kind of mild or kind of hot, you'll get a hot pepper. <laughs> so I typically do that during this time. And what that kind of allows my garden to do, for those of you guys who've been watching me for a while, you probably have noticed this, but my garden kind of grows and then that dies back and this grows in and then that, that dies back. Since I only have a small space, I have to work with what I've got, which means if I let everything grow at the same amount of time and I've packed in as many things as I have back there in my garden, there's not gonna be enough sunlight for things to reach everything. Those pepper plants, as glorious and beautiful as they are, I don't wanna leave there because they're blocking the sun from my Armenian cucumber getting as glorious and beautiful as it possibly can. I was so jealous, guys, when I was looking at Instagram and other people had Armenian cucumbers already in Arizona, and I do not. <laughs> so jealous. So what I have to do in my garden, since one, I don't have a full sun garden, I get more sun now, since there's more sun in the days now, but what I have to do is I have to cut back what I already have a lot of and allow what needs the sun to grow. And then I can start the new starts underneath what I'm allowing to grow because then it won't be competing for life. So sun skull isn't something that is going to like, like you, it won't mean that you can't use your fruit. It just means that you want to make sure you cut this spot out and you want to pull the fruit as soon as you see the sun skull. Because when you see sun skull, it allows this part of the pepper to rot if you leave it on the plant or if you pull it and don't process it or use it right away. I am going to put these into the freezer and not all of them have sun skull, like this one doesn't have any sun skull at all. Um, just the ones that were on the top part of the plant have it. So I'm going to chop these up, put them in the freezer right away. And like I said, I have a ton of bell peppers like I have bags of bell peppers so I'm not gonna miss that plant for right now I'll probably plant that plant again maybe in another like two or three seasons maybe the winter time is when I'll probably need more bell peppers so I'll plant another bell pepper I don't think I'll let it go in the same spot just because it got really, really big, like really, really big. Now, the other thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the blossom end rot. Now, when something has blossom end rot, usually it is uneven watering or it is a calcium deficiency. Once again, if you take it off in time before it starts like rotting the actual fruit, you can just cut this part off and this part is still nice and hard. It's not soft or anything like that. So you could still use that part. Now, my issue is probably going to be more so a calcium deficiency just because I haven't added compost to that area in like a year and a half guys like those those plants have been there for a while so what I plan to do is to really go in and amend that portion of my soil and, and my bed now if you guys have been following me for a while you know that I always have something growing in my garden there's always something growing in there because we can grow all year long but not every time is there something in every single spot. I usually have a few blank spots in my garden. And what I'm doing is I'm allowing the worms to then come in there and eat those roots, eat the roots, leave all their compost, and that leaves back a lot of nitrogen and just a lot of healthiness for that space. And then I'll top it off with compost if it needs it. I might add some more worm castings from the worm bin, and then I just let that space rest your garden needs to be able to rest at certain times. Otherwise, you'll deplete it of everything that it has. So it needs to be amended and it needs to rest. And that's kind of how I rest my garden while being able to still produce food for my family. So those are the two things I wanted to talk about when it comes to why I pulled out the peppers. 
and I hope you guys follow along to see uh, the uh, sweet Marconi peppers because oh my goodness those are my favorite bell pep or my favorite peppers ever and I just want to have a ton of those plants because they're delicious so until next time make sure you guys are growing yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food and Shabbat Shalom to everybody bye